Hi guys, welcome back to Code Master Coach, your medical coding tutor. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the admitting diagnoses. And the admitting diagnoses is just that, that diagnosis of which you're admitted for. It's not a UHDDS requirement. Remember we said UHDDS stands for Uniform Hospital Discharge Data Set Requirement. Um, one of the diagnoses that's required to be captured. However, some third-party payers do require the admitting diagnoses. Therefore, we do, as a protocol, ask coders to start listing the admitting diagnoses. So, what is an admitting diagnosis? Book definition of an admitting diagnosis says, it's a significant finding, it's a sign or symptom, it represents patient distress or an abnormal finding on an outpatient examination. So, coach, what, am, what are you saying? I'm saying, you know how you go into the hospital or to the emergency room or to your physician's office with a headache? Well, that sign or symptom, headache, is an indication to you that something's wrong. And when you get to the hospital, then they do studies and determine based on the studies what your principal, remember we said principal diagnosis is that which after study was found to have occasioned the patient in the hospital. Well, your admitting diagnosis was headache and after study it was found that it was a brain aneurysm. Okay? So again, your admitting diagnosis is just that. It's that sign, that symptom, you know, that significant finding that, that caused you to go in to seek care. Um, lab work could be an admitting diagnosis. Physicians did your blood work, which you just, you'd just probably do every six months or at least once a year when you go to your physician's office. And based on that lab work, they found out, oops, your BUN and your creatinine levels are elevated. That's an indication of renal failure. So because of the, that lab work, then they're going to do more studies to determine exactly what's going on. So your lab work could be your admitting diagnoses. Um, your physician could just call you and tell you, go on over to the emergency room, I need to have you admitted based on something he found in the physician's office. An injury to your hand. It, you might come in with a hand injury as your admitting diagnoses. But after x-rays, it was found that your metacarpals are fractured, um, poisoning. You might have taken your medicine and took a drink of alcohol with it. That becomes a poisoning. And because of the interaction of the two, yes, it's a poisoning, but what effects did it have on your body? Did it break you out in a rash? Did it cause you to become sick? So again, injury or poisoning can be admitting diagnoses. It's a reason or a condition that's, that's not actually an illness or an injury, or it could be a, a follow-up examination. The physician tells you um, in follow-up, he suspects a condition. But again, studies haven't been done. This is just your admitting diagnoses. And also remember, sometimes your admitting diagnoses will not line up with your principal diagnoses. Don't change your admitting diagnoses to line up with that principal diagnoses because, again, admitting diagnosis is just that. How are we going to know in the future if some type of elevated lab work is an indication of intestinal cancer if we don't continue to monitor it? So don't change your admitting diagnoses once you determine what your principal diagnosis is, leave whatever it is as you're admitting because that's what they came in for. Um, some examples of an admitting diagnosis and then your principal diagnoses are just that. Patient came in with a gastrointestinal bleed, okay? They went to wipe after going to the bathroom and found blood. And then after study, test work, tests and lab works were done, they found that the patient had an acute duodenal ulcer with hemorrhage. Okay, another example, a lump in the right breast. After study, after they did ultrasounds, 
after they did lab work, it was determined the patient had carcinoma of the right breast. So see your difference between your admitting diagnosis and your principal diagnosis. And in, in the hospital, as the director, when I was the director of, of the um, health information management department, when our patients would come in with an admitting diagnosis, it helped us daily to try to track our revenue. Where were our resources most being spent? And a lot of times we could tell by that admitting diagnosis about what range our patients were going to fall in when it came time to um, discharge the patient and, and just how much revenue or resources were being used or, or going to be used. And I knew my high dollar cases versus my low dollar cases and which ones I needed to kind of really get some manpower on because it was going to be holding up a lot of money. The admitting diagnosis helped me with that. So now, based on the videos we've done so far, you should know that an admitting diagnosis is what we talked about today. That admitting, that sign, that symptom, that first diagnosis that you go in with. Your principal diagnosis is that diagnosis after study to have found to have occasioned you to the hospital. That's your number one diagnosis that you list. That's your money maker. And then the additional diagnoses are additional diagnoses that we would capture on a patient's case or on their record for this particular admission. So if you haven't yet viewed my video on principal diagnoses or other diagnoses, make sure you view those two videos as well as today's video. And based on those three items, admitting, principal, and other, you should know all diagnoses that we should be capturing on each admission. Okay guys, thanks a lot. My next video will be on procedures. Okay, any questions, email me. Um, again, we're on this journey together. We're going to get this coding down pat. Um, we're going to do hands-on coding, but right now I've got to give you those rules, those coding guideline rules that I always tell you to refer to. I'm going over them right now, and I'm trying to do them slowly but surely so that it makes sense to you and you can follow it. So again, if you have questions, email me. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, subscribe so that you don't miss a video and you stay on track. Um, if you haven't yet built a notebook, start building your notebook on medical coding so that you can refer back to your notes and my videos as we're going through this stuff so that this stuff will start to make sense. All right. Thanks, guys.